All right, in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how to create a landing support custom component using a custom component type part. Here I have the finished product already created. You can see that I've actually added an image in here. I have some input values for my left distance uh, or start point from the corner uh, points of the wall. I have my distance to the first bolt and then I have a maximum spacing here for the bolts and then the stiffeners. And then I have my other side input point here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply these settings. So the way that this works is that I would be imagining that I'm actually standing on the inside of the building here or this stairwell shaft and I'm going to be applying this as if I'm going left to right looking from the inside of the walls. Now if I'm in a plan view then the way that would work is if I start here on the upper wall I'm going to actually control left click here and then just hover my mouse over to the left and I'll just say five foot using the numeric snap and there's my first point. So I'm going to go from left to right and then I'll just pick this location here and then I'll right click and interrupt. Now, when I double click on this component, you'll see that I don't want really that uh, three and a half inches on the start point. So I'm just gonna say half inch here, or I might even say zero in this case, because maybe I want that lined up right with the header, um, you know, or a little bit behind the header. And then, um, and so then here over on the right, that's where I'll actually put in three and a half and I'll say modify. And then you can see that I can control that setback because I'm gonna have another one here coming into that side of the wall. So let's do half inch this time and then one half inch. We'll then say apply and okay. And then for this case here, I'm gonna apply the component by activating it. And then I'll pick the corner here from the top down. And then there we go. You'll see that it's going um, basically towards the left. Now, if I wanted to reverse that, let's just show that like if I pick from here to say here, then you'll see that it reverses it and puts it on the other side of the wall. So again, the, the way that you apply from left to right or your first point to second point as if, is as if you are looking at the inside of the wall towards the outside of the building. Okay, so we'll interrupt and let's actually uh, delete that out. Then I'll go back to the settings that I had before here where I actually wanted the three and a half on this side here. So I'll do three and a half and then I will do, so let's say zero on this side and apply those settings. And now I'm going to be going from the right to left along here and I'll say five foot. And then you'll see that the first point that I picked and the setback of the three and a half is there. So the way it works is that Again, you pick left to right looking on the inside. If you actually think about this, if you were looking from the inside out on that wall along grid line A, then your, your picking order goes from right to left and then in plan view and then from left to right up here. So there you go, that shows the application of the component. Okay, so now I just exploded this component here along the wall so that we could kind of see some of the building blocks of what I did. Well, essentially I modeled in my end stiffeners because I know that those are always going to be there and that there will always be one um, a quarter inch off the end of that. Now I then modeled an additional stiffener and welds here for this stiffener that's gonna be actually arrayed or copied. And then I used the array macro here, which basically allows me to uh, make copies automatically. And so here I can enter in the number of copies and then the spacing, and then I can enter in those calculated values from my dialog box to that. And so if I do a search for array over here in the applications and components, there's this linear array tool, and that's the component that I essentially used here to do the copies of the weld and the um, the stiffener. Now, one important thing that uh, it actually took me a second to figure out here was that I did want on the copy method that I needed to choose um, all associated objects. So that way the welds uh, for the stiffener to the angle would actually automatically copy. So the only input part that I selected for this component was actually the stiffener and then it uh, grabbed the welds when I selected this uh, um, all associated objects essentially. And then I'm just doing copies in the X direction I want them based on the specified value I type in. And then um, then basically, you know, you can say, where do you want it um, to actually be copied from? And I just copied it from the actual location of the first object there, or you could say from wherever the origin point is of the first picking point. And when you apply that array tool, there's actually um, an origin point, and then you specify an X direction, which defines how the X spacing uh, is going to place the copies. And then there's a Y axis here, if you had any kind of Y, y orientation, and I just went perpendicular to, to that flange there. Okay, so that sort of shows you how I did that. Then on the bolt group, I just went from the left edge of the angle all the way to the right. And then here, um, you'll see that the first edge distance is over in the DX uh, start value at four and a half inches. 
And then I just basically have my number of spacings at the spacing value that I essentially need. So that shows you the building blocks of the component. Now, how did I actually make the component? Well, to make the component, you know, I can just select um, pretty much all of the objects here. So let's actually just window around all of this. So I'll window around all of these objects here. And now we have all of that selected. Now what I can then do is I can then just go up to the Applications and Components panel, and then I can say Define Custom Components here. So I'll go to Define Custom Component, and here we're going to use Custom Component Type Part. And I'll just call this Landing Support Number 2, because I already have one. So on the advanced tab, the key thing here was that I actually turned off this use the center of the bounding box because I don't want Tecla to look at the extents of the materials and then uh, try to give me position properties. I want the back face of the angle to go exactly where I pick in the model. So I'm going to uncheck this checkbox. All right, so then we'll just go ahead and say next. We have the component object selected. Now it's saying pick the, uh, the part positions. So I'm gonna pick from there and then essentially I'm gonna go all the way across here to the other side. And then I will say finish, and now I have a new custom component created. And all of those objects are now inside of that. Now, the key thing here is that when I edit this component, so if I select on it, right click and say edit custom component, the four basic views come up. And the key to making this parametric with the length of the two picking points was that here towards the magenta end of the angle, that's actually the near the first point that I picked and then the yellow point of the angle is towards the right. Well, what I do is I select on this first point here and then I right click on it and say bind a plane. Well, what I can do is I can switch this from in the toolbar here to component planes. And now you'll see that based on the two picking points, there are planes that are lined up at the end of those picking points. So on this first one here, I'm actually just gonna pick there, and now I get a binding distance that glues that to the end. Now I actually had a setback there of like a half inch, so I probably should have um, you know, made my input point about a half inch away, so that way I had a distance that I could enter in there. But then I can also always come into the variables list, and I'll see that binding, and then I can actually come in here and type in a value. So let's say that I do half inch here, and then you'll see that, and then it actually moves that material back a half inch, you know, so that could be the actual input point of my um, of my component. Now, how do I do the right-handed side? Well, for the right-handed side, I'll select on the component, uh, or select on the angle. I'll click on the point over here. I'll say bind a plane. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and select that plane and you'll see that it has that larger three and a half inch dimension. So in the variables list, this is where I can just come in and rename these. So like if I wanted these variables to appear on the dialog box, I could just say start setback. And then I could say end setback. And now I have those two values there. And let's say that I set this to a half inch. And so now I have a half inch on both sides and then I'll close that. And you'll see that it actually stretched that over. See how this is a half inch and a half inch. And now when I close this and go back to the model, we'll see that if we uh, select on this component that it now is only a half inch away from the two picking points and a half inch on that side. And then if I just come in here and actually grab this input point, you'll see that it parametri parametrically adjusts the length of the angle based on that, um, you know, the two picking points there. And then if I come in and change this to say like three inches and modify, you'll see that there's now a three inch setback. So that's pretty much how custom parts can be uh, used really easily to um, basically, uh, you know, make a type of uh, angle embed or or this ledger support or landing support and basically control the length of the part by binding the input points of the angle to each component plane on the left and the right hand side of the component. All right, so now let's go ahead and go back to my original component. So I can select on the component and right click and say edit custom components or over in the catalog, I can right click on the icon and say edit custom component or edit component. That'll open up the four basic views. And then usually what I do is I minimize the main 3D view or any views in the background so that way I don't accidentally model in those. And I only model in this uh, these four particular views here. Now just, uh, again, this isn't a full training on this. This is actually just gonna showcase like some of the parameters and formulas to give you some ideas of what to essentially do. So first, if I come into the variables list, you'll see at the very top, 
that what I did is I got this P1 uh, parameter. And so you can actually get uh, use the template editor values with this FTPL uh, kind of function here. And then I got the length of the angle so that way I could get that overall length in order to do my calculations for the number of stiffeners and the number of bolts that I need. Then I basically made a parameter here for the maximum spacing, so two foot, and that's on the shown on the dialog box, which is what you see here. And then I actually used this ceiling value, so this ceiling function, where I took, um, basically, I divided out the bolt spacing distance. So I took the length of the angle, subtracted five inches off of each end or whatever the distance to the first bolt is on each end. And that is what this P6 formula is here. And then the P4 is the setback on each end, distance to first bolt. But I used this ceiling uh, formula here to actually, and then change the data type to factor, which is basically a number with decimals. And what I did here is I essentially took the um, the spacing distance that I need to calculate divided by the maximum spacing, two foot, and then I did a ceiling value. And so what that did is it actually uh, rounded up the number to the next um, the next increment um, or the next even number. And that's actually what I would have needed. Now, if this would have been like 4.53, then I wouldn't have actually done four spaces. I would have needed five spaces because 4.53 wouldn't have worked. And so I rounded this up so that way, like when I actually divide out the actual spacing here where there's P6 divided by P3, which is this number of basically spaces that I've done a ceiling to, so it rounded up to the next integer value. Well, notice that when I actually divide out the actual spacing here in the dialog box, that P6 divided by P3 comes out to one foot 10 because this wasn't an even increment number and it taking t um, you know the uh, basically this nine foot two divided by five gave me one foot ten spacing so you can pause it and kind of study here but basically i did a little bit of tricks here with the factor and then i you know kind of used the ceiling value to always round up now what if it would have been a perfect two foot spacing here like what if i would have had a 10 foot spacing from my first and my last bolt well, that's fine. The ceiling would have still reported out a five because it rounded up to that actual number. So then everything should have actually worked out just fine here. So here you go. This kind of shows you some of the uh, logic that I used to do the spacing calculation. And then what I then did is I just took those calculations for the actual number of spaces and the spacings. And I made a bolt distance list here using the distance list type. And so I just strung together P3, which is essentially my number of you know spaces that I need. So there's the P3 plus an asterisk plus P5, which P5 is my actual spacing. So that spacing distance divided by the number of spaces there. And so there we go. We got our actual distance list that then maps over to our bolts. So how did I get that over into my bolt? Well, here in the component browser, we'll see that there's the bolt. And then I have my bolt distance X value. And then I just right clicked and said add equation. And then I basically linked P7, which there's P7 parameter. And I took the formula for that and I linked it to that variable by adding that variable name after the equal sign. So now if I double click on this, you'll see that this is five at one foot 10, which is exactly the resultant value of this uh, P7 variable and the formula in the list. So there you go. That, again, this isn't a full on training. This is pretty much just like a kind of overview of the logic that I did to make this shelf angle using a custom component type part.